get ready. Close all your apps, grab your willpower by the balls, and prepare to do 500 pound deadlifts for your brain. From WASM Studios in San Diego, California, this is the Superior Men Podcast with your hosts, Matt and Jay. On today's episode of the Superior Men Podcast, Matt and Jay talk about their wonderful new year. I woke up uh, this this uh, January 1st, female. You and me both, brother. Oh, that sounds interesting. Uh, what'd you get for your Christmas presents? This is stupid. All I get is radish and a difficult puzzle. Trust me, there's much more to the story. All that, much more. Very much about goes. And welcome to the Superior Men Podcast. Uh, again, as I've sort of had a, a habit of saying here recently, uh, you are welcome for that intro. Uh, it was amazing, um, and you you should have enjoyed it. You may even want to go and listen to it again, because it was that good. Um, I am your host, Matt, with my fellow host, Mr. Jason. Good morning, or good afternoon, good evening, good night, etc., etc., etc. Bye bye. Uh, yeah, it's morning here as we're recording, so uh, that's how it goes. And uh, thank you guys for taking the time out of your day, your evening, uh, your life to listen to the Superior Men podcast. Uh, Bull J and I definitely appreciate that. We uh, see the numbers, see that you guys are keep downloading, uh, keep uh, sharing uh imposing the superior men podcast on uh, your friends and family we appreciate you guys doing that remember people naturally resist getting stronger it's work um they need to do yeah. it though it's like going to the gym so yeah keep keep that's pushing, what this is keep pushing the superior men podcast on them <laughs> good job guys exactly uh anything um also if you guys have anything to share with us uh, I know you could drop an email to us, uh, podcast at wearesuperiormen.com. Bolt J and I will get that, so uh, if you have anything fun, exciting, or terrible uh, to say, that's fine. Either way, uh, go ahead and drop us a line. We both appreciate that. Uh, Jay, what do we got going on? Uh, yes, we have some cool stuff going on uh those of you who are book lovers are already appreciating our book cast superior men book cast uh we have just finished recording the exciting upcoming george orwell classic 1984 it will be out february 4th it is it's great those of you who have not read 1984 um it was actually written well before 1984 uh it was a what was that 1950s i think that it came out um incredible book so we're going to be talking about that one uh if you're subscribed to the superior men podcast you will be getting the bookcast automatically so if you've already subscribed go back and check out the other ones that we have in our past we have including never split the difference our most recent one uh can't hurt me 12 rules for life 48 laws of power great stuff make sure to check those all out and then we also have a book, Matt. It's coming. It really is. We promise. It really is coming. Yes. <laughs> well, that's what she said. It is a great book. And speaking of that, talks about sex um, and talks about how you can take your, not just your sex life, but your uh, masculine life to the next level, the sexual magnetism book and the books going with that. We'll be offering some special deals, pre-sale copies, discounts, and other cool stuff for our email list only. So make sure you sign up for wearesuperiormen.com slash join to get access to that. All right, Matt, <laughs> let us let us talk about our topic for the day. It is a, it is a New Year's topic. Yes, it, New Year. New Year. It is new a new year. Time to twenty. Time to uh, well, you know we we've talked about this so many times with uh, you know New Year like ah oh, make a make a, a New Year's resolution and give up on that shit like uh, two weeks later or whatever right you know like um, I I love that I think that that's funny but so uh jay had a had a great topic that uh we have uh, the article on the website we are um it's called throwing in the towel so you know just about giving up 
Like that's pretty much what you got to do. Just give up on on life and everything, and why even make it <laughs> goals? Um, I think that is that what I read. That I, it is. It, well, you know the my one of my favorite phrases, and, and everyone has heard it uh, multiple times, is that you know really satisfying, really nice kind of pithy New Year, New You. you yeah. Know? Well, you know who says that is. Uh, uh, 48 or no 20 not 48 hour 24 hour fitness uh who's the other one of the other ones i saw they were all over the um the new year's thing in in new york and planet fitness or something maybe mm. um or fitness 19 or well, i don't know whatever one of the chains you know has stuff all over there but they're the ones that say all the stuff about um you know new year new you uh, it seems like they have the most to gain. I swear to God, like they want you in there and they want you signing a contract and then never coming back. But <laughs> but keep keep paying them. That's what they want. Um. Uh, well, the the new year, new you is a great idea. I mean, the <laughs> concept of it, and it's. I personally love New Year's. It's maybe my favorite holiday because it's it's the only holiday that is really designed for for two things. One, drinking. I mean, it's just really like it is drinking. Designed for that. It is a big party, and and it it has fireworks, and there's never any downside to fireworks except maybe if you're a dog. But there is a a sense of like all your job to is is really to stop doing bad stuff and start doing good stuff. Like that's it. You don't you don't have to get together with family per se. You don't have to buy any gifts. You don't have to like go anywhere. You don't even have to be an American if you're not patriotic. You know, like I don't you know, there's no requirements other than to like have a new way of doing things a little bit, changing something. Well, you uh, weren't like oppressed by by the other years. So, you know, it's not like the patriarchy oppressing you. Uh, it's, uh, or, or, you know, uh, Columbus day with, you know, how he was not a good person and, you know, we're, we have to, we have to apologize for all that. It's, we're, we're not looking at that for the new year. We're just sort of like, yay, the earth made a rotation around the sun. <laughs> Woo! We made it. We made it. We and did we're, not, we we're did still not, here. <laughs> we did not die. Comet did not hit the planet, yeah. you know, and, and there's something inherently kind of uh exciting about that sense of newness and freshness and bad things in the past bringing in the new stuff well well, like i said i i know when i wake up uh january 1st i'm a completely different person so uh well totally different you know what man i i I would say you uh, you and you and me both brother and and everyone else i woke up i woke up uh this this uh january 1st female that's how it works. <laughs> well, yeah. We totally have to, new person. I have to chat with your wife about that. That sounds interesting. Um, she's, she's less than happy. <laughs> but uh, new, new year, new me. New year, uh, new year. No, well, no, actually, new year. Let's be honest, guys. Really, let's dig, let's dig down here. It's actually new year, same you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's really what it is. It's not there, new year, new you. It's new year, and, same you. Unless unless you've put in a ton of work, unless you've you've been working hard at something and you've been changing at something, but still the stroke of midnight there didn't do anything. It's still the same you. It's it's absolutely a a challenging thing to see. Okay, I'm optimistic. I'm excited. This is new. This is fresh. It's this is like you were just mentioning going to the gym at the beginning of the year. How many, you know, what, what is it be like 70, 80% of the gym memberships money comes from at the very beginning of the year. Yeah. This is their Christmas. Right. Right. You know, they're going to be working the longest possible hours. They probably start at, you know, five o'clock in the morning and go close to midnight for, for the next couple of weeks here. Uh, we want to get everybody on that train. The problem is if you are trying to change something in your life, uh, you have tried before. Right. This is not the first time. And like like Matt, so what are some things that people are, you know, the guys that are listening right now uh, can identify with that they've tried to change and hasn't worked? Oh, come on. I mean, you you look at that. Just think of all the things. This, it's all the things. There's so many of the things. Um, you know, it's the, the stuff that everybody does or that everybody hears about, or basically that you could sit and 
watch TV for uh, for a half an hour and and see that you know it's like losing weight, you know going to the gym you know so getting in shape, um, paying off your debt, uh, don't uh, don't smoke anymore, don't drink, uh, don't don't watch any porn, you know like. Well, maybe the don't watch any porn. That's probably not on uh, not on TV. Right? Not not so much. Uh, <laughs> I think I saw Red Too Bad on it. Yeah. No, well, no, yeah. no, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. Not not so much. But I mean, you know, where then when we talk into especially for men, uh, getting better, you know, you talk about getting getting rid of pro, getting rid of, or reducing how much porn you watch, uh, getting rid of like the toxic people in your life. Uh, you know, how about, well, and I'll say this would be equally for men and women, right? You're the, the phone or social media addiction and how do you get, uh, um, away from that? So, I mean, you know, how many times if, if weight is an issue for you, how many times have you tried to lose weight? Probably every other week or something, right? I mean, that there, that's always how that goes. You're never so. not, you're never not thinking about those big those big deals in your life right i mean they're kind of always there and you're always kind of working at them a little bit i mean for losing weight but my my grandma uh you know god god rest her soul she was our grandmother she was i believe on the 30 year diet plan was her was her plan seven seventy or ninety year diet plan (laughs) no I, i i mean but but what's what's really funny though is like there's always stuff that comes up. So and and this is what we're gonna go. This is what we call foreshadowing. Mm. Um, but like just a a quick story of uh, one of my friends. So I know like um, s- he and his wife were really planning on um, like a, um, both kind of attacking their weight together and. Then and they were planning on doing it as uh, like a lot of people do. Is they were talking about this at at Christmas time. This was a couple of years ago, and they were talking about it a couple of years ago at Christmas time. They're like, "Hey, you know, at the first of the year, we're gonna, you know, do this, and you know, you've kind of inspired us to to try this and go like try more ketogenic and 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 lose some weight and whatever." And anyway, and she experienced a like a a personal family tragedy and Mm. that all got put on the back burner clearly. So, you know, you you can't, so there's always stuff that comes up and that happens. And obviously uh, their priority at the time was to go and lose weight. It's been one that has been like a, something that's been in the background for quite a while. And all of a sudden the priorities get shifted. So, and that's that. I mean, that's constantly happening, right? Like, yes, maybe not to like a personal tragedy, but not uh, not that not sort that of it's that tragedy, but yeah, not that it's something that big, but that the it's uh, the priorities are they shift. I, I love right. I love how you said that. the The challenge is that okay, so we've tried to change these things many times, and they're. You know, they're, it's just not working. You try really hard, and then something happens, something comes up. You know, you get confused, you get weak, and then you fail. And you're all yep. depressed, and you give up for a while, and then you come back harder, and maybe somebody that you know, maybe they stop smoking, and now you, your, your smoke break buddy at work is like, well, well, shit, if he did it, I can do it. So you go back, and you like tr- just gut it out, and you try even harder, and then you fail like worse than before. And, and it doesn't work. It's not working. <laughs> well, and what's interesting, too, and I know this is, uh, you know, what we're going to be getting at here. But really, when you do it, you're you're looking at you're 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 picking up too many things. There's too many things that are going on. But one of the uh, one of the things in a, in a former life I used to uh, and I don't think I've uh, talked about it on here, but I used to work as a 911 dispatcher. And, um, and so doing that and working as a, uh, um, as a dispatcher, so obviously telling the officers and, 
and stuff where to go as well. But when um, when you're doing that, you everybody talks about dispatchers, or you may have it in whatever your career is. You may just be like, hey, we're just fantastic multitaskers, and you're not. You what it is is you prioritize. You really can only focus in on a couple things at one time, and really only like one or two things at at one time. Um, you just have to get really good at prioritizing, handle that task, and then move on to your next priority. You just get really good at doing that quickly. And, um, you know, there may be some sort of um, analogy for that in, uh, you know, whatever your career is. Um, like I said, that was a former career of mine, but that is definitely something that you have to, you know, that you have to look at. You have to go, no, I have to attack this thing. I can't just peripherally attack it. I have to go at it like hardcore and, and that's how we do it. So the, it, it, it doesn't mean the other things are unimportant. Uh, it just means that they are less important, which means I'm not paying attention to whatever that thing is. Uh, that's a, that's a really good example. The idea that you're, you think that you are multitasking. Um, but what you're saying is like you're dialing down in and doing an, a series of things quickly, but still with each one at a time. And we're going to come a, a little yep. bit later here in the podcast. And we're going to talk about kind of how to do that because uh, that's really kind of foreshadowing the solution for yep. this. Um, the the problem is getting from here to there, right? Right, um, it, exactly. And and that's what I'm saying. So, like, what was interesting is just, again, with, with that particular career, that took a bunch to – that took a lot of time and energy and focus to learn that skill mm. uh, to be able to do that because it, that does not come naturally. Uh, mm. it, it doesn't come naturally to do it. And I always give this example for um, – you know, like if, if you call the police because your house was broken into, there's nobody in the house anymore. Um, it's just you and minus a bunch of stuff. Uh, so you call the police. How important is that call that you just made to the police? You know, it, like what would you say, Jay? Like in in your day, in your if you if you came home today, and you know half your stuff was missing, uh, and you call you call the police, you call the sheriff. What? Uh, how important is that to you? Uh, to me, very. Yes. Yeah, like, have you, like, when was the last time that happened to you? Um, it was, I, I haven't or had, have, or has that ever happened? To I haven't you? I mean, had, maybe your car broken into. You. I, yeah, I was going to say, I've had car broken into you on multiple occasions. Uh, thankfully, I've never had somebody come and take stuff out of, out of my actual physical house. Okay. Okay. So then let's just, let's put it there. And I, I want to go a little bit on here and I know I'm, I'm going on a little bit of a rant here, Jay, it's on purpose. So, um, all right, but, I'll allow it. <laughs> but if that's what we're doing, you, you do that. It's never happened to you before. So if you come home to today and then you see that half your stuff in, in your house is gone, how important is that to you? Oh, I'm over overwhelming. My mom and my stepdad actually had their garage broken into, um, at mm. kind of middle of last year, and Gary's truck was stolen. Um, oh man! They were they were in the house at the time. Uh, they had no idea that it was happening. It was super smooth, super quick. The guys that were doing it were, um, I wouldn't necessarily say pros, but high level amateurs. Yeah, and and. It was a it was devastating for them at many yeah. levels. So that happens. Then you call you call the police because you're like, oh, we need, you know, you don't know what else to do, so you call the police. And fantastic. Well, what now? The now the the nine hundred and eleven dispatcher takes that call. They put it and and they have, you know depending on how big your city is you, that could be they only have you know two calls because you, ha- you you're in a, a small little spot or maybe you're in the city of Chicago or New York or LA and they have a thousand calls that that are holding at one time and that all gets lumped into a queue based on a priority and they have to figure out what the priority of that call is that call as is 
probably life-changing to you, and you will tell stories about that happening for years to come, is doesn't even make a blip on the radar for them. And there are so many other calls that are more important than that call. You know, there are calls where people are being held hostage. There are people, you know, calls where people are, you know, gravely injured or whatever. There's so many other examples that I could give. But um, in the in that scheme of things, your call now that is so important to you, it means nothing. Or I shouldn't say it means nothing. It's just the priority is so low. So will an officer get out there to it? Yes, they will. Eventually. Eventually. Mm. But they're not going to be there in, you know, they're not going to run their lights and siren and be there in five minutes for you. Um, that's not how that's going to work. So um, just like our our willpower and how we have uh, only so much to give, uh, you know, the police department only has so many officers. So if there are... 10 calls and they only have five officers they have to pick the five most important things and send those five officers to those most important things and then as soon as that call clears up they have to reevaluate what is the most important thing that i can send this officer to even though you called in because your house was broken into and it's been five hours six hours you still don't have an officer out there well because they keep going to more important higher priority items so the same thing happens with our willpower uh we don't have an infinite amount of willpower so we we can only work on what is um what is important um kind of for so long or really i can only work on stuff uh for so long um, and only so many things at one time. I can't do all the things all the time. But um, is that? Uh, I I know there's something here you can uh, expand a little bit um, on our willpower and our uh, as the as a resource. Uh, yeah, willpower is a really big deal. But just to touch on what you're saying here, it's a, it's a really fascinating concept. Is this idea of priorities mm-hmm. and our time? we end up our attention is kind of our creative power right what we're focusing on at any given time is what we can change and what we are currently focusing on is can be changed at any time as well right so that creative force that we have our attention our focus our energy uh right now is working on this one thing or this or this or this so what you're saying with that, you know, the example of a police dispatch system is your job is to do triage for the city or the community that you're working with or wherever it is where you go, okay, this is most important. This is next. This is next. And it's a logical conscious choice to do that. The The process of becoming a, a new person and changing a thing is the this process of thinking about being like a dispatch system rather than just doing what first comes up at any given moment you wake up oh the kids are running over here so we got to try and corral them we need to make sure we get food in them here oh i have that business meeting here i'll make sure i get all my stuff for that throw that together okay the wife's headed off there uh make sure that she is uh coordinated we're going to meet up again we're we're doing lunch today okay great and then you're out the door and, and then you're on your way to work and you had to make that one last phone call and you're only focusing on the things that immediately come up in that moment because mm-hmm. you don't have a specific plan. You didn't on purpose ahead of time kind of go, okay, this is priority. Then we'll do this. Then we'll do this and, and set up a system. So part of that and coming back to what you're saying a second ago here about willpower is that willpower is a lot of people consider willpower to just be a thing that everybody has. And as long as you use it, then you'll be fine. <laughs> Most I- people... I, I actually saw something that was a, it was a comic uh, right at the, the first of the year, right at the new year. It was just a two pane comic and the first uh, actually no, I, it was three panes. So the first pane was a delivery man going, hey, here's your uh, yearly allowance of willpower. Uh, no, it was two. 
make sure you, uh, you know, you don't use it all up at one time. Just uh, trickle it out through the uh, end of the year. And then the next pain was the, the, the person had drank the entire bottle of willpower. And they're like, well, you're going to be good for like three weeks. And then... <laughs> You won't have any for the rest of the year. <laughs> uh, and, you know, there's a there's an element of that, kind of like what we're saying with that that concept of the New Year's resolution and this new you and you're excited right, and right. it's great. Everything's wonderful and then it's gone and then you're just depressed for the rest of the year. Well, you're like, well, maybe 2021 will be our year. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> if, if you're saying, if you're saying, well, I'm looking forward to 2021 and it's uh, February of 2020, um <laughs> like the perspective needs to change a little bit. It is a fascinating concept. If you start thinking about will, willpower and energy as like a muscle that can be depleted. So there's this yep. really, really interesting experiment by uh, Dr. Roy Baumeister, uh, Case Western Reserve University did this experiment. And some of you may have heard of it. He took his, uh, a number of students from the psychology department went out and spread out and maybe grabbed some people from uh, from throughout the campus and brought them into a room. And the room was filled with the aroma of fresh baked cookies. Um, so even if you are fully keto, I'm, I'm sorry, that is probably going to be pretty <laughs> tempting. Um, so the table before him sits down. The table before him has a plate of those cookies that they've been smelling. And then next to it is a bowl of radishes. Uh, some people were asked to sample the cookies. Others were asked to eat the radishes. And then afterwards, they were given 30 minutes to complete a an impossible geometric puzzle. The uh, information actually says difficult, but it really had no way to solve it. And which is, you know, that's a psychologist trick. They love doing stuff like this. Mm -hmm. Baumaster and his colleagues found the people who ate the radishes and, and did not eat the cookies gave up on the puzzle after about eight minutes. Uh, the people that ate the cookies preserved for nearly 19 minutes. Yeah, because those people given the radishes were like, fuck that. This is stupid. All I get is radish and a difficult puzzle. <laughs> I'm not, you know what? This is not worth it. I, no. I thought I, I thought I was getting something good out of this. <laughs> and no, it's not. It's, it's no, this a, is terrible. It was the capacity to resist... And and not have that, you know, that smell is right there. No, your job is to eat the radishes, but I smell and I want and I need those things and they're right there. But I'm just mm. going to eat my radishes. I'll be fine. It's, this is a, a scientifically controlled experiment, famous experiment, cookie and radishes experiment by, by Bowmeister. And there's been a number of other experiments that are similar. But you've probably experienced something very similar in your own life. You are asked to do certain things and then you're put in an environment where you, know, you want to try and stop drinking but you're around people who are drinking and they're all everybody's drinking right everyone's drinking and so you're like you know what i'm just gonna have i'm like i'm not gonna drink a lot i'm just gonna have one drink everyone's there i mean it's cool i'm not against drinking i'm not a you know i'm not a teetotaler whatever it's not that it's just i'm trying to you know i'm trying to cut back but you know, we'll just have one because it's right. it's fun and everybody else is there and the environment is leading you to it. And at the beginning of the night, you aren't going to have any, you know, two hours later, you're doing tequila shots with the, the guys from your group. <laughs> so it, you you get overwhelmed. And yep. that's the that's the, the thing. So what we want to try and do is give you another way to to do it rather than just like fight and bang your head against it and, and just gut it out. What's the what's their other option, Matt? What do you think? Uh, well, I mean, kind of as, as what you were saying with the uh, with the with the article, just throw in the towel, just give up. I mean, you know, just just we're not not gonna not gonna do it. We're just gonna give up on uh, on on everything. Oh wait, no, no, sorry, not everything. <laughs> uh, just. Give up nope. on life. Well, you know what? There isn't. There's. There's times I've felt like that. Yeah. When I'm working on something, I'm like, you know what? Just fuck. Fuck all of it. Fuck all of the things. Well, just because I'm I done. think that's the easy. It's the easy, and sometimes it's the logical conclusion to make because you're just like, dude, everything is too hard. I'm just gonna give up on all of the things for right now. Um, or then some people unfortunately have the thing where they're I'm gonna give up on all of the things forever. And which that's 
if things are overwhelming, um, try pruning out some of those things. Try focusing in on a priority or two uh, and letting everything else slip. So just go, no, I'm not doing that. You know, you what you want to work on is, uh, you know, being able to do, you know, well, well, hey, like David Goggins, I want to be able to, to break the uh, pull-up uh, world record. Uh, he didn't do that and then also had, well, and I also want to make sure that I can, uh, you know. He wasn't sp- training for bad water. Yeah, when- I want to cut my marathon time <laughs> in half also. And then yeah. also I'm working on writing my memoir. Uh, we'll do that all at the same time. And it's like, n- no, you you can't. So you you have to like focus in on on something. So, um, you know, Jane, you gave uh, you gave an analogy uh, throughout your um, your article that you wrote with uh, Rocky, um, and talking about giving up. So, and actually, that's actually what I'd like you kind of to discuss how you even came about using that um, that analogy, and then explain it to the folks here who haven't read the article. Okay, so. I I love the Rocky movies. I do. They're uh, just the just the Rocky soundtrack. And those of you who've been listening to David Goggins know that that's kind of his. If you if you want to call it a theme song, <laughs> when he's in the middle of really difficult situations, uh, Matt was it actually is. just telling me yesterday that when he broke the world record for pull ups in a twenty four hour period, he, did he listen on repeat the whole time? Is yes, because he, he did it for seven. It, it was. You know, you had to do it in, in so many in, in 24 hours, and I think he did it in 17 hours and, and some change. But he said the entire time he had the Rocky theme song going, and he's like, it's only a two-and-a-half-minute song, but that song was on repeat the entire time. Mm. Mm. You know, and uh, there is something about the Rocky stories, all of them, that I think they just go right to the core of, of every guy. And the Rocky Four story, which is the one I referenced in this article, is, I think, one of the most potent. Because it's not about Rocky, really. It's really about Apollo Creed. And for those of you who haven't watched the movie, first of all, go watch the movie. It's so good. Um, and it's... you know what's funny? I was thinking about it. Rocky Four, I think, was the first one I saw. Like as a kid, was it really? I think that was the first because all I remember was the the crazy Russian. Like mm. that's what I remembered, and that's what I remembered about Rocky was the Russian, the massive Dolph Lundgren. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right, just you know, being being enhanced with with everything and state of the art. Uh, you know, I mean. It was about fighting the Soviet Union when, when in reality, if that was really in the Soviet Union, uh, not not so much with the high tech kind of things. It would be more, yeah, not not so much. But no, I just I remember seeing that, and that's what I remember seeing for my first Rocky movie was that one, which it, is odd, I guess. That's that's so interesting, and it's a it's a great one to start with because it's such a strong America in this corner, Russia in that corner. Right, right. It was during the Cold War, so there's a strong, very strong symbolic parallel in there. And at the beginning of the story, what happens is. Apollo Creed, who has kind of been sitting in the background, uh, he he was unable to take Rocky down in the first movie, but he was still the champion of the world. Rocky just went the distance. I mean, he wouldn't have gotten the decision at the end of it, but it was just it was really more a question of can he last all the way to the end, right? He didn't win, but he didn't he he kept getting up, and finally, you know, Apollo Creed was just like this guy. I can't I can't break him. He's just got an iron jaw. The second one, he actually wins, beats Apollo, and kind of like turns him into a friend in the process. Um, then Creed comes as back. All, as all good friendships start. Right? Fight. Like, it, you know what? There is an element of that. I, we, should, uh, we should do a podcast on that one at some point because you really do need to spar with somebody. You need somebody who is your equal who can give it back to you um, and, in order to really be able to respect them. But he earns Apollo Creed's respect. Creed trains him in Rocky Three to beat the incredible Mr. T, uh, Clubber Lang. A takes him. Fool. <laughs> Pity the Fool. Man, he was, that was, that was an icon, an 80s icon. Pity mm-hmm. the Fool. And, 
So at the beginning of Rocky IV, Creed doesn't have his own thing anymore. You know, Rocky's the champion, everyone gets him, but Creed is kind of on the sidelines. So when this giant Ivan Drago comes in and starts challenging and mocking the Americans, he says, I'm going to take this guy out. Um, and Rocky's like, I, you know, I, I don't, I don't think that's, we don't, do you really need to do it? He's like, man, I got to do this. I got to do this. And he hasn't fight for a couple of years and he's getting older. Um, and he has no idea what Drago has been doing. He has no idea how he's been attached to computers and steroids and uses up, you know, state of the art technology in the training and everything. And so he comes up and he does this fight. And at the beginning of the fight, Stallone goes in and kind of like does a little reconnoiter and sees how big this guy really is and what his capacity is and goes, this is, this is not, I don't think we should do this. And of course, Creed has never, uh, never had a problem going up against anybody. Nothing's going to take him down no matter what. So it's like, you know what? Be in my corner. Come on, let's do this. We're, I'm going to kick this guy's ass and we're going to go home and, you know, have breakfast. Um, <laughs> right. And he in the first round basically gets gets beat down harder almost than Rocky did in the in all 15 rounds of their fight just wipes him out and he barely makes it through the end of the first round and he is bloody and he's swollen and uh Stallone is like you know this is this is not good this is not good man we we got to we got to finish this we got to take you out like you can't do it and Creed comes back to him and gives this this classic line. He's like, don't stop the fight no matter what. No matter what. And Rocky goes, okay. Goes back round two. Um, and it's uh, it's just a brutal scene to watch. He he The pummeling continues, gets worse, but now he has no defenses. His, he's not strong enough to protect himself anymore. And... Uh, they really should have stopped the fight. The ref should have stopped the fight, but you know the Russians don't know how to stop, right? That's the that's the implication. He's he's here to he's here for blood, and he keeps beating them and he keeps beating them. And Rocky's holding onto the towel and everybody's screaming, "Throw it in, stop the fight!" Uh, his trainer's doing it. Apollo Creed's wife is right there. She's yelling. Everybody's saying like, "This is stop the fight!" And he holds it because Apollo Creed has has made him promise, "Don't throw that towel in. Do not quit." And then, then he hits him, and he keeps hitting him, and he hits him so hard that he, he, he's got nothing left. And, and it takes him out, and he falls, and the guy goes over and pronounces him dead. And Apollo Creed has died. He has been taken out completely, totally destroyed. And Rocky's still holding that towel in his hand. Yeah, so he should have given up, right? Absolutely. And and so it it is it's an interesting thing where you just go like you know obviously it's a it's an exaggerated sort of metaphor for things. It's, but, it's not over the top at all what are you, what yeah, are you talking yeah. about. But but really when you're looking at it there are times where like you do you need to give up. You need to just go, you know what? I'm done with whatever this thing is or this person or whatever like they're uh, the the cost benefit is is not enough or or whatever so they're just going to and whether you're saying you're you're giving up or you're just going to throw them way way down on your priority list um either way fine same thing you just go you know what i can't spend my time and energy uh to to go through this and you know like like i was saying with um with with police and 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 or fire or or whatever with any of that stuff you have if you only have uh you know if you have 10 calls that are there and you have five police officers you have to pick what five things those five officers are going to go to you want to send it to all 10 sure but you can't right now so we're we're going to have to pick the 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 most important five and we'll send to those five so, you know, you have, just like that, you have finite resources. You only have so much time, so much energy, so much money, so much whatever. You know, ability to deal with stress, you know, what, whatever. Well, or the other one, right? Willpower. Um, you only have so much. You're, and you, 
Yeah, we're 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 not infinite beings. Right. You you have to you you only have so much. So what does that mean then? You know, you you can't do everything all the time. You have to be able to cut yourself down and limit to certain things. More so at certain times, maybe it's a you know, a higher stress point, you know, maybe you you know over since we just had the holidays, maybe just over the holidays you had a bunch of uh, family staying at your house or something like that or or whatever. It's like, well, that'll add on a little bit of stress. So maybe, you know, you're not as capable at that point to do something as you would, you know, two weeks later or two weeks earlier. Um, so just sort of understanding that is 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 a big deal. Um, and I, and I really like, and, and Jay brought this up on here, um, <clears throat> and it's kind of hard to, to conceptualize, uh, without looking at it, but, um, and I've seen this as several things, but the Stephen Covey's four quadrants, hmm. um, <clears throat> and I think that it's, it's really good. Um, but basically there's just four boxes and, y- y- you know, you talk about, ways of looking at things um can you uh explain that just a little bit jay definitely yeah the information that we're we have here is from the seven habits of highly effective people uh dr covey's incredible book highly recommended if you haven't had a chance to read that in fact we'll do a be doing a book cast on that not too long in the future but the idea is everything that you're doing can be kind of categorized in one of four categories so there's two there's two urgent options and there's two not urgent options and then there's two things that are important and there's two quadrants that are not important and the the urgent important items are like crises medical emergencies pressing problems deadline projects uh and then last minute things where you're prepping for an activity so that's an important and urgent thing then we have important not urgent which is preparation and planning, prevention, value clarification, uh, exercise, relationship building, and recreation and relaxation. So the, those two things, those well, those two boxes, two boxes, those are things that we should be prioritizing, managing, figuring out what we need to do on those things. That, Even that's, though, the, so, that's important. Yeah. Those are the important yeah. things. So the important urgent and the important non-urgent. So we're saying those are important things to do. So some of them are happening right now. Some of them are happening later. Um, but those are things that should take up some of our time. Absolutely. And then what about the other two? Yeah. So those are the those are the ones that you want to be focusing your energy on. Then the two not important quadrants, the not important and urgent is interruptions. Um, some, maybe many phone calls. Um, <laughs> this is an older box that we're looking at right here, but you got to you got to say texts and various alerts that you have um, on probably emails, most, you know, most of those mail, email. Um, some meetings that you have that are, Matt, you and I were chatting a little bit about that. Yeah. Now as your manager, sometimes some of the meetings that you're doing, they're super important and we need to do them right now. And they're really, you're not getting anything out of it. Well, uh, no, it's, it's urgent. It's super urgent because it's going on right now, but it's not important. It doesn't like, it doesn't, it, if I am there or not there, it makes no difference. There's a <laughs> there's a, a sense of certain things that that's what you got to do. I mean, you got games that are coming up for friends of yours, especially if you guys are, are sports fans. Like, there's certain games that they're on right now, and they're like they're on in 20 minutes, or they're happening right now. So you got to watch the game, got to catch that. So let's get on board with that. Make sure that you're doing that. There's news that's going on. There's debates that are happening, um, and that's happening now, right now. In fact, you just missed it. What are you doing? Get up to speed. So it's urgent, but really not important um, for your overall life. And then what's the what's the last quadrant, Matt? So the the last one is funny. Where I think a lot of people, well, I like what it's called. It's the quadrant of waste. I think this one's easy. Where we always look at this, it's the not important, not urgent. So you know, just busy work, 
junk mail a lot of like your your phone messages would go in there 90 95% of social media would fit there <laughs> yeah uh sitting in front of the TV and watching TV like mm. you know just like hey i'm not doing anything right now i'll sit down and see what's on TV you're you know that that would be your quadrant of waste that would be the the those um the, those activities that are really easy to avoid. Um, so that's that's what we're saying. Like, you know, it's interesting looking at it because you do. You have to um, prioritize each one of those things. You need to look at, you know, if you look at it in, in that quadrant, we'll link to it here in the show notes or uh, if you go to uh, uh you'll see uh, that article um actually no it's not in the article this is just something we had talked about so um just check out the show notes and we'll we'll put it in there um but it's it's something for you to look at or you could just google what's what's it it's stephen covey's four quadrants yeah stephen covey's four four quadrants yeah but Uh, if you just take whatever the task is whatever the thing is it'll fit into one of those four boxes Yep, there's two 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 categories on each side. One of them is something that you need to do right now, and one of them is something that you need to do at some point. So right. it's urgent or it's not urgent, and then there's something that matters and it's worth investing your time in, and something that's not giving you uh, any particular bang for your buck. You know, you're you're investing time in that you're not really getting anything out of it. So it's important if it ma- if it matters, and it's not important if it doesn't matter. So those are the four quadrant: urgent, important. Urgent, not important, not urgent, important, and not urgent, not important. Uh, the the focus of those four, really the best place for you to be spending your time is this stuff that's not urgent and it's important because the urgent things, you can't run around like a chicken with your head cut off all day. You can't spend, unless you're working at the ER <laughs> or, you know. Even, dis- no, even then, you still don't. I know from what everybody else thinks, they go, oh my goodness, it's just emergency to emergency or, or whatever. And it's like, well, yes, it is. But they're managing what's going on in those emergencies because they focused and planned on uh, making sure that they have the staff that they need, the supplies that they need, they have everything that they need in order for that emergency to to come to place. So, mm. um, it, and so that's how everything really should be worked. So, it, it's really good. And and for those of you who struggle to um, set a priority in your life or priorities in your life, I. I recommend looking at that, and you, you know, you don't have to read the whole book or or whatever to to understand this. But if you just look at the Stephen Covey's four quadrants, you can go, "Hey, here's the thing that I'm doing right now." You know, you may just be listening to this podcast. Maybe this is not important, not urgent, okay? But you're driving to work or something, so you know, you're stuck with us. You're welcome. <laughs> um, well, it, the the goal <laughs> though, the goal though is to take your time like you're saying and that's one of the things that we love about doing this podcast and and we're big podcast lovers in general right i mean yeah I, i'm we listen to multiple podcasts both of us that is something that you can do that's valuable where you're adding values to your life you're adding skills to your life and it's not critical that you do it in that moment so you're kind of planning for the future and it it maximizes your time while you're in your commute or maybe you're listening to it while you're out walking or something like that and audiobooks same deal um other kinds of information gathering tools uh same deal that's it can be really valuable to have have stuff like that um so i think here the the kind of the main concept that we're going for is Instead of having like New Year, New You, we we really want you to think about the idea of giving up certain things. We don't want to give up everything, and we don't want to give up on life in general because that's you know that's when you're fe- you know you're in trouble when you feel totally overwhelmed. 
But when you start giving up this stuff that is not serving you right now, and you look at that quadrant, the Stephen, Stephen Covey's quadrants here, and you start realizing there's a bunch of time and energy that you're investing in stuff that you're not getting anything back for it. Yep. The, that's you, a, so that's a big one. You're, yeah. you're investing a lot of time and energy in something that, you know, yesterday, if you just sat and watched TV yesterday for an hour, what half hour, the next day when you wake up, you're like, fuck yeah, I'm glad I did that. That was awesome. <laughs> I nailed the shit out of, uh, uh, damn it, I'm just trying to think of a name, Real Housewives or whatever. I don't know. Like, you know, you're, you're just like, I, I nailed it. Nailed it. Um, I'm so glad that I spent the time watching whatever that mindless stuff was. And it, not saying, like, hey, if you're a huge fan of uh, Real Housewives of some random city, then awesome. Good for you. And, and, and you know, if that's something that, that you enjoy, but, you know, it's totally different than just sitting down in front of the TV and just being like, entertain me, box, in my living room. <laughs> Make or, entertainment. Or, or worse, where you're so, you're so tired and your brain is so done. And this is actually a real good kind of measure for how you have marshaled your energy throughout the day. If you've ever gotten home and you're just like, spend a half an hour or or more just going through channels looking for something you're just kind of like mindlessly mm -hmm. uh i've i don't want to admit how many times i've gone through netflix and been like yeah yeah i was just gonna say that show? my 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 uh, uh my analog to that is netflix like hmm, nope seen it but you know my wife and i go through that it's like no and i'm like yeah and she's like no or then she'll <laughs> or then it goes the other way right so um, but no, that's true. That's absolutely true. Like if you, you don't look at that time and really, if you're just like tired, you're just like, no, I'm just exhausted. You know what? You know, what's better spent sleep, sleep, just go, just go to sleep. sleep. Not deal. I tell um, my kids amazing. this all the time. I was actually really proud of my son yesterday because he, he hasn't been feeling fantastic, but okay. Um, and after lunch yesterday, he was like, Dad, I'm really tired. I I gotta, uh, I'm gonna lay down and and take a nap right now. And I'm like, cool, good, go take a nap. That's good. I'm glad. And nice. And right, exactly. Just go upstairs, lay down, no problem. Like, but I have no issue with that because a lot of times the kids will just push through and then be, you know, those of you who are parents, you you realize that your kids can be gigantic assholes, and you're just like, <laughs> you're like, dude, I. I yeah, go get some sleep or something. Let's just let's just not not do this. But I I I say that is like you know you always have to look at you know you only have twenty four hours in the day. So one of the the things is is you only have so much time. So you can only focus on you really and and Jay I'll let you expand on this here just a little bit. But like you only can really focus on one big thing at a time. I mean, and if you can't, or, you know, you can't, uh, I want to run a marathon and I also want to write a book. Well, I've never run a marathon before and I've never written a book before. So those are going to be high energy drains, both of them. Can I work on both of those at one time? You, you can work on them. Um, you will not succeed at either of them. Okay. And that is that hurts. That, that hurts, Jay. Yep. Yep, it does hurt. <laughs> so many of us have hurt ourselves for in many cases years attempting to do too many things simultaneously and we're spending if we have 100% energy and we only have, you know, 20 after we've done all of the important and, and non-urgent things in our life and the important and urgent things in our life. So, you know, those third and fourth quadrants are eliminated completely. Even if we're spending all of, you know, like call it 80% of our energy on those two uh, important parts of our life, we have 20% extra energy to do a new thing that we're working on. Uh, I, One of my friends, his dad and mom were in the middle while he was really his dad was really in the middle of the project she was uh, kind of the the attempted beneficiary of it of a remodel and that mm -hmm. remodel uh we were we 
you know, I, I know this guy for, I don't know, probably seven, eight years. And that remodel lasted all of that time and more before I met him. And, you know, we ended up uh, having some problems in our, our friendship. He, he made some choices I couldn't live with. And but even after that point, that remodel still wasn't finished. It took a certain amount of money to make that thing happen. It took time, um, which he didn't really, his dad really didn't have it. He could only do it on some weekends. And it took energy and he was tired from his job at the end of the day, so he couldn't do it at night. And so it got pushed back and pushed back and he'd work for, you know, an hour here, a couple hours there, maybe a good long weekend where he'd really dig into it. And it just... Every time you went into their house, you're like, oh, I see that the, this wing of the house is just wood. Um, right. And there's plastic tarping over there, so there's that. And it was it was kind of energy draining just to be in that section of the house. Nobody ever went into that section of the house because it was energy draining. And it was just really fascinating. And everybody has projects like that, maybe a couple of them, maybe a bunch of them, and they are beyond your 100% energy that you have left to spend. So if you can cut out all of the other things that you're working on, all of your projects, all of your big goals, and do just one of them, then you actually have the capacity to start making a difference on that thing. Um, Gary Keller talks about this in his book, One, The One Thing, which is, uh, I haven't read the book yet, but I've heard really good things about it. And, and here's a quote that I found that really grabbed me and made me want to read the book uh, even more than I already did. He says, extraordinary results are directly determined by how narrow you can make your focus. When you spread yourself out, you end up spread thin. So... It's kind of like this concept of a, of a battery powering a flashlight and a battery powering a laser. The same, uh, you know, 2D batteries in a flashlight can illuminate a section of your room quite well or, you know, around your car or kind of do a nice swath in case you're uh, doing your uh, criminal uh, investigations, <laughs> right. your CSI, your important stuff like that. But if you attach that to a laser, it can go miles that same amount of energy can go miles away and you can, uh, you can, you know, cause damage on planes if you want to, if that's your thing, or, you know, signal uh, across great distances with just the exact same amount of energy. So it's about thinking about how you're spending your energy and admitting you cannot do all of the things that you have been trying to do. Um, so Matt, what are what are kind of some examples of uh, some other examples of things that that probably guys have been working on or may have been working on simultaneous things that are sitting in the background that could potentially be cut, removed, moved to the background, or or removed completely? Well, you know, it's really any of those things that you're looking at that you're like any of those those drains, and I and I like it because uh, in um, the in Ethel K's book, um, oh, the energy vampires. Yeah, the energy vampires. That's what he refers to. Ah, I like as. that. I like that. Yeah, and and it's totally true because really, it's anything that is working that is pulling away from you know from you being successful at what you're doing. You know, I mean, like great well you have that you you know you have that car that old car that's been sitting in your garage um and you you want to restore it you want to do whatever but it's been sitting there for five years you know you haven't either make the time you're saying that that is the most important thing so that's what you're going to work on or if you're going to be realistic with yourself you're like well dude i haven't done anything with that I haven't done anything with it and I don't have time to do anything with it right now. So <clears throat> I'm 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 either I'm going to do something and get rid of it and put it out. So either you go and you sell it or you know whatever. You get rid of it so it's not that distraction that overwhelming thing that it's just sitting in your head that you you you're going to need to uh, take care of it or something you know every time you walk out into the garage you're like oh god there's the old car that's you know piled with crap all over it right uh yeah you, you just get that a little just a little bit of a sinking sensation every time you go by that right. thing that's not done because you want it done 
and whatever whatever that thing is for you you know you've maybe it's one of those things where you're like dude i've 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 wanted to be a writer my whole life uh and i have uh 14 books that i've started and i've written uh you know th- three chapters on but i've been working on that for a decade uh but you haven't done anything with it you haven't finished it you haven't done anything it's like how about you put that onto the back burner how about you give up on that for right now like don't let that be something and there's something cathartic about just getting rid of whatever that is that project card that you you know again let's just be honest you're not going to finish it you're not going to do it so since you're not going to get rid of it and it, and it hurts even just as you're saying let's be honest you're you're not going to finish this thing it hurts to admit yeah, it, that it does. that that thing is is not happening in your life and it's not going to happen not at the right things are not at the not at who, who you are right now and where you are right now that is impossible for you and it hurts to admit that and that's kind of that where well, you, we're saying this idea you think of, you're admitting of, failure it it, it, cause, it, cause it feels are. like it, you it are. feels it feels like well no it feels like you are admitting that you are a failure for that ah. when, when in reality you mm. are not a failure for that in in reality you're not going to do it anyway so if you're not going to do it what point is there in keeping it and you're you know there is it doesn't do any good to have it as an uncompleted project just sitting there forever and ever. That doesn't do you any good. That doesn't help you. It doesn't do anything for you. It is a drain on you. Yeah, it would the be better to beneficial. just exactly. It'd be better to just hey, let's get rid of it. Let's get rid of it all together. That um, we're it's gone. You know that that old car is gone now. It's it, and suddenly you go in the garage and it's like. That's not there. It's it's like that that particular drain on your energy and resources and and on your kind of like mental concept of like this is something that I have to do. You just put a check mark on that on that to do list. Yep. You you didn't end it the way that you had planned to end it, but suddenly you're like, oh, okay. Well, now I can think about something else. And if you do that with enough things that are going on in your life, enough of these little small projects that are important to you, these little goals that you have, suddenly you're like, oh, okay, so uh, the novel, I'm not, not messing around with that anymore. I'm not gambling on the on the weekends, so I, I suddenly have more time and, and more money. And more money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm not spending my, my hour and a half every evening watching television that doesn't really give me anything and i just went to bed earlier and then i like wake up more energized i'm like well shit I'm, i have energy like maybe i'll go to the gym right like, now i can i can actually do that and it hurts a little bit to admit that you failed with that project but you're not a failure in the sense that like okay i can accomplish things it exactly the exact opposite you are now consolidating your energy getting rid of the things that aren't going to serve you and thinking about okay so it's this question of success isn't a battle it's a war right right and it's something where you're you know you look at this you go maybe you had the best intentions five years ago when you got that old car to, to fix it up and do whatever with it but it is that drain now period and you're not gonna have enough have any more time for another five years to to do it so then eliminate it get rid of it move on focus on the things that you are that you should be focusing on right now and you'll complete those and then as far as anybody else is concerned they're like yeah dude you're just you're kicking ass and taking names you know i mean so if you do look at that as going well just just because i i i i made either i made a bad choice you know, originally with doing this or I had the best intentions, but you know, it's time to cut my losses at this point and I'm, I'm done. And now I'll move on to what is important. And that's that uh, war analogy that, uh, that Jay was just saying too. It's not that battle, you know, you, you just go fine. I lost the battle, but in, in cutting my losses for this battle, it enabled me to redouble my efforts and win the war on it, you know, to, to, 
win five other battles that uh, that I've been doing because since I lost this one. So, you know, it's it is a a very important thing to look at and to try to how to reevaluate what's going on in your life. Oh man, this this will give you a whole bunch of extra energy. <laughs> yeah, uh, and because you're not draining it. As you're listening to this, you're probably thinking, "Oh wow, you're there is some stuff that I can get rid of." And you're right. Every single person has ways that they can go back and look at their life and and cut stuff out and and you don't have to invest yourself in every single thing that you want to do or hope to do now. You know what? Uh the so we're using that war analogy here that we're referring to is the the Spartans are one of the people that we continue to come back to. I swear in the last couple of years I've seen more Spartan helmets of <laughs> right. one kind than another. Every fucking person has a new Spartan something somewhere. I mean, sure there's Spartan races, but it, it it's that that leanness and that muscularity and that like eliminate all of this fancy frou frou overwhelming unnecessary garbage stuff and go this is what we do. We do one thing and we do it incredibly well like the movie 300 um when the grecians show up and the spartans are there and he says oh we have more soldiers than you and i that that response is so great he's like you know you what's your what's your job he's a potter what about you uh yeah he's a baker what about you he's uh he works out in the fields what about uh, spartans what's your profession and like all 300 of them like just <laughs> yeah and it's like that's what they do and you brought he brought way more soldiers and that's what you can do by cutting out all of the extra stuff, the physical, the mental, the emotional garbage and drains and things that are pulling you away from your, from your one thing that matters to you. Right. Um, And that one thing could change. Like I said, you know, your, your one thing is maybe it is that, that project car and you're doing that, but then now many other things came up and it's like well you know what now now that project car needs to be put way to the back burner or eliminated out completely you know and like you said if you if you stay lean like that it 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 helps you a lot more in going through what you are going to do with your life and really setting what those priorities are and what those priorities should be oh man that this is this is awesome. This is awesome stuff, and it's going to give you a lot of capacity to make twenty twenty uh, your your best year ever. Yeah, which really... is what which is why I said so. Again, we're not saying new year, new you, but how about new year, more focused you? Yes. So just be more focused on what you're going to do. Figure out the the crap that you can just let go get get that other stuff and you'll be surprised at how much more energy you have to focus on what really is important um that is a substantial thing man it can it could change it could change everything it really can uh we want to hear uh, we want to hear you guys working on this stuff um uh, we would love to hear your success stories things that are things that are working for you uh, if you want to give us an email, uh, podcast again, again, our email here, podcast at we are superior Uh, we read everything that, that you guys send us and we will respond to everything you guys send us, um, because we care. And also because uh, know, he cares, he cares. Uh, I, don't, I don't care. He, he does. He does. He, he doesn't like to say it. He's, he needs <laughs> kind of a hard ass, but he really is a softy underneath. Um, but guys, thank you so much for listening today. Uh, we, we want 2020 to be your best year ever. And if you can throw in that towel and get rid of that, that stuff that's not working for you anymore, that's not serving you. Um, this is going to be a, a fantastic for your year for you. And I just want to say thanks again for listening. Uh, and on behalf of Matt, Stay superior. You just listened to the Superior Men podcast. If you enjoyed our show, make sure to subscribe so you can hear all of our best content. 
And if you want to help your friends get smarter, make sure to share this episode with them. For more information about this podcast and hundreds of ways you can upgrade your life, visit us online at wearesuperiormen.com. Remember, gentlemen, live superior. I'm going to get the way 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 I'm going